What is good dream team? Welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to learn how to web scrape in Node.js with Cherio. It's going to be a three part video where part one, we're going to learn how just to web scrape, steal information from the internet, anything that you could possibly want. It's all yours. Uh, part two is going to be learning how to implement this on a cron system. So at a regular interval, uh, and also how we can persist that data in a JSON file on our local hard drive. So if we get an interruption in our uh, scraping, it's no concern. And then part three will be how we can serve that up in an express server or a JSON API uh, using REST. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, and without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is make a directory and I'm going to call it Reddit Reader. Because in this particular instance, we're going to want to read data from Reddit. So we're going to CD into Reddit Reader and I'm going to run npm init-y to initialize a pack on package.json file. Now, this is going to be important because we're going to need to install Cherio and Axios. And so Cherio is the web scraper and Axios is a request wrapper that allows us to send uh, fetch requests to get information in HTML from a particular page. So now that we have those two files, we're just going to touch make a file called server.js. And so now if I open these up in a code editor, we can see that we have our project and in here we have our dependencies, Axios and Cheerio. And so now we can make a start script to run this whole thing. And that's just going to be node server.js. And so to test that that's working, we can just console.log nice. And we can now run this in our terminal by saying either node server.js, we get nice, or we can say npm start. Works either way. Either way, we get nice. Cool. <clears throat> so step two is to require in the packages that we're going to need for this video. And so the first one is Axios. And so we're just going to use the syntax dot require Axios. And the second one is const Cheerio is equal to require Cheerio. And so now that we have both of these, <coughs> we can start making some magic happen. So for this particular video, as I mentioned, we're going to be web scraping from Reddit. And so we're going to do learn programming and web dev. Uh, and we're going to try scrape these online readers. But just to get an easier hang of things, we're just going to come into a simple web page. So let's just say Mozilla object entries. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is because Reddit tries to make it a little bit hard for you to scrape data. But it's no qualm for us, we will get around it. And let's just look at this page first. So the first thing you're going to need to run this is just to define an asynchronous function called run. And underneath, we're just going to execute run on script when we execute this script. Now you could also just do a self calling function. So if I go async function just like this, so I could either console.log uh, self calling or in here console.log cool. You could do it either way to run your logic, but we can see that executing this executes both of these functions. So either way is totally chill. I'm going to stick with the first one. And so now that we're in this asynchronous function, which we need to make asynchronous calls to request the HTML from the page, we can copy this URL and come back into our file and say const URL is equal to, and just paste that in there. Now, <clears throat> the best practice for this is to execute these calls within a try catch block. And so essentially what this is going to do is catch any errors without breaking all of your code. And so in the instance, when you get an error, you can just console.log the error message. Otherwise we can run our asynchronous call and we can say const data is equal to await axios.get URL. And so this is going to run out to this URL and fetch the entire HTML for the page, which we can see over here. And so if we just console.log data and run npm start, 
we can see that we quickly receive all of this HTML from the page, which is kind of useless, but it's good for Cheerio. So now to initialize an instance of Cheerio, what you typically do is you say const dollar sign is equal to Cheerio dot load data. And so Cheerio, an instance of Cheerio is going to read in all of that data and we can do whatever we want with it now. So <clears throat> let's say, for example, we wanted to select this particular, let's make it quite specific. We wanted to select maybe, what could we possibly select? Something small. Uh, let's say we wanted to select this header just here. Does that have anything to it? href, maybe we'll, okay, we'll select this whole h3 tag with the ID of parameters. <clears throat> So if we wanted to select that, we can test out our selection in uh, this window over here by coming into our console. And we can use jQuery, which is how uh, Cheerio selects, and just do exactly that. So our element was an h3 tag with the ID of parameters. And so if we did hashtag parameters, that selects that h3 tag, so that works nicely. And um, we can see we get returned. Uh, we could also go, <clears throat> if we wanted to be more specific, h3 parameters, that would also work as a selector. Uh, and if we look at this, we could also do an attribute like title, for example. Uh, and so if I just copy, let's see if I can edit that, copy that. Now, if I come back into the console, I could also do, so that was an A tag. And if we wanted to do the data attribute, we would just say uh, title equals and pass that in here. And so that's going to select just that tag specifically. Um, and so that's how you would select with an attribute. Now we can also select with the tag directly. So we could go h3 but the issue with just doing h3 is that we will likely get a whole lot of h3s back and so that might not be specific enough and if you do have multiple entries it will just clump them all together into one particular thing which can be kind of confusing and so we can see that here if we go console.log and select h3 you know we might get lucky and only get back one h3 but we can see there's actually multiple ones and so if we run our code, console.logging any h3 selections, <clears throat> let's see what we get. So we can see that we get an object. We can see that we actually get three instances. So we get this first instance, we get a second instance, and we get a first instance. And so we can actually turn this into an array instead of getting it back as an object by using the get method and that will return an array of each of them, which can often be a lot easier to pass over. Uh, and so we can see that we were actually getting four entries back just before. So now there's a number of things that you can do in this particular instance. Let's say we go back to using that particular data attribute. So this one just here, we'll copy that and use that as our selector. Now we paste that in there. What can we do with that? That's going to give us back one particular uh, HTML tag. And so it's going to return that whole HTML tag. And so we can use some Cheerio methods. We just saw that dot get is a Cheerio method to separate all returned instances into an array. The dot text method is going to return the inner text of that particular uh, H3 element. And so in this particular case, it did not necessarily enjoy that. And we got back a lot more than what we expected. I think what I must be, ah, I see what I'm doing. I'm still console.logging the whole data. That's pretty silly. So if we just go back to whatever we had before and console.log that entry, we can see that it does indeed just return back parameters. And so the dot text method will just return back any inner text within this tag, however deep you've selected. Uh, now, if you did have multiple h3 tags and you wanted to get the dot text from each of them, you can just dot get, so that will return a method, and then you can map, sorry, that will return an array, 
and we can map over those values and load each val into a Cheerio instance and apply the dot text method. And so what that will do is take each A3 and get the inner text from each of them. And so now we can see that all the different H3 tags are returned neatly in a cute little array. So that's super cool. The last method that is good to know is you can also return the .html. Uh, and this can just be cool if you want to see exactly what you're getting back. And so here we can see that we get back that HTML tag. So that's just nice and neat. <clears throat> How are we going to web scrape from Reddit? So we're going to want to select this little tag here. And you might notice in this particular case that we don't have any useful classes or anything really except for some occasional tags like, uh, you know, the classes mean nothing, the styles don't really mean much, nothing easily to select from. The one thing that we can use is this data test ID bar, and we can use the structure of the HTML to actually select particular things. So what I'm going to do is replace this URL uh, with our Reddit example save that and move this down and we are going to come in here and use a series of selections to make sure that we're getting to this particular div just here and so how that's going to look is if we're loading in that data the first thing we're going to want to do is select a div with the attribute so it's data test ID is equal to double quotation mark and that is equal to subreddit sidebar. And so subreddit sidebar is going to return this entire, everything wrapped within that particular div. And so if we wanted to select something more specifically, we could say div first child, because we can see that this particular text is contained within the first div of this element. So here we can see that that uh, selects below. We want this first div in here. And so we can add that sub selector just like that. And we can keep going deeper and deeper. So the next one is going to be the second child. Uh, but I think it's also the last child. So if we close that, we can see that there's only two children. We want the second child. So we can say div last child. Uh, and then we can open that up. And now in here, we want div second child. <clears throat> so we can say div uh, nth child two. And then inside of that nth child two, we want to open that up and we want to return the second child also. So that's going to be another div nth child two. <clears throat> and so now we're console.logging that and we can apply the dot text method to it once again to see if that does indeed return back exactly what we want. And so Reddit is thinking and we can see that we do indeed get back a whole lot of text, which isn't necessarily useful. It's obviously reading a number of different items, but we do in fact get back that online status. And so if we apply the dot get method instead, we can see that we can separate all of these instances into an array. Uh, and what we can do is since we know it's just going to be that first entry, we can just uh, get that first entry in the array like that, nice and easy. And so instead of console.logging it, we can say uh, const, uh, what could we call it? Reddit. We could just say activity is equal to that selector. Uh, and get rid of that at the end. And then we can say const num is equal to and we can load that into uh, that tag into uh, an instance of a Cheerio instance and apply the dot text method to get that text method. And so now when we console.log num, we'll expect back just the active online users and the online thing. And so that's exactly what we get down here. And so we can just further filter that by saying replace all and we can get rid of the online and replace that with nothing. And the one other thing we might want to do is replace all and we're going to return any commas and replace it with nothing just so that we can pass this all into an integer 
uh, because pass int doesn't like commas. And so now when we pass this number once more, we should get back just the exact number of users, 875. So that's super cool. What if we have multiple URLs? So let's say we also wanted to do web dev. Uh, and so we can copy that URL and now we can turn URLs into an array of different URLs. And so we could choose probably good for the minute. Now there's two ways you could run this code. Either you could for each through URLs and run them all off synchronously one after the other, but that's kind of analogous to sending a letter. Let's say you have 10 people to mail. You send one letter, you wait for a response and then you send the next one. It's going to be much faster to send off all of these asynchronous requests in parallel. So all at the same time and then expect them all back whenever. And so to run them all in parallel, what we're now going to do is in here say const data is equal to await promise dot all and we pass promise dot all an array of all those letters that we want to send out and expect back and so it's going to await for all of them to come back after sending them all off at the same time or close to the same time and so we can create this array from urls so if we dot map over urls uh, that's going to return an array and each of these arrays, I mean each of these returned items in that array is going to be a promise. So we can instead just copy all of this into here and now it's going to send off all of these requests asynchronously. Uh, the only thing we're going to have to do is make sure that we actually return some information from this so it populates this returned array of all of our letters. And so if everything turns to custard, we're going to return an object that has the key of the URL and the data is going to be null. <clears throat> and otherwise we're going to return uh, the same thing except we're going to have the number here. And so now if I console.log data, <clears throat> we will see that we can asynchronously send off all of these requests and get them back pretty quickly. Uh, and it's much faster than sending them off one after the other. And so that totally worked. We now have web scraped this information. Uh, and with that, that's pretty much basically how you can do it. We've learned the dot get method to separate into an array for multiple returned items. We've got the dot text method to get the inner text and we've got the dot HTML just to render that HTML. Uh, so if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out part two, where we're going to learn how to make this run at multiple at regular intervals using cron jobs. Uh, and part three, where we're going to serve this up as a JSON API, but thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and catch you guys later. Peace.